Paul, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Fink. Present. Commissioner O'Neill. Present. Commissioner Crone. Here. Commissioner Sweeney. Here. Commissioner Nelson. Here. Commissioner Rocker. Here. And Chair Commissioner Forsman. Here. At this time, citizens will be allowed to address the board on items not on the agenda. For items on the agenda, citizens will be allowed to address the board at the time a motion is on the floor. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to the board about items not on the agenda? And I believe that would, this is the spot where you would have your opportunity. And please give your name uh, mm -hmm. and uh, for the for the tape and uh, uh, for the record. Derek. Okay. Uh, my name is Deborah Bloom, and I live uh, in Hermantown. Uh, for the last um, few election cycles, I have voted absentee because I was working for the nonpartisan program, Get Out the Vote, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I would hate to think my vote didn't count while I was helping others to vote because I voted absentee. Please count all those ballots. By opening these ballots, we will have the opportunity to ensure Minnesota v voters who did everything right and who cast lawful votes that should be counted. These votes were lawfully cast absentee ballots that have been rejected due to sorting errors or other administrative mistakes or of bureaucratic nature. These ballots should be counted so as not to deny any citizen their vote. This is not a partisan request. These are lawfully ca cast ballots should be counted regardless of the political party of the candidate receiving the vote. Thank you, Deborah. Is there someone else that wishes to speak? Please, sir, come forward. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chad McKenna. I'm a resident of Duluth. Um, my wife and I came to Duluth in 2001 to go to school at UMD. And in 2004, we worked, uh, we really became, uh, became to get involved in, uh, in the community. Um, and when we worked uh, to register thousands of young people to vote, uh, and get them to the polls in a year that Duluth had uh, one of, if not the highest turnouts in the country. Uh, in northeastern Minnesota, we're a people that pride ourselves in community involvement, civic engagement, um, and, is, and is this uh, hyper-democratic attitude that we have in northeastern Minnesota that partly convinced my wife and I to stay here uh, and raise a family. Uh, that's why I came here today to just urge you to uh, make sure every uh, vote that was legally cast uh, to be counted. Uh, and that we would just ask that those wrongly rejected absentee ballots are counted. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Uh, please. Mr. Chair. Uh, point of order. Point of order. I was wondering, Bates. the last two speakers who spoke on, on voting, that is not a responsibility that this county board has. Um, so I'm wondering why we are uh, listening To, to that point, uh, Commissioner Fink, and, and I understand your, I understand your uh, concern, but I will just say that, that uh, as, as chair, I've always felt that anyone that came before this county board uh, that wanted to speak their piece after they are, uh, that, that, that information, those things that they might want to say, they feel are important that this board here, whether or not we can do anything about it or not is, you know, would be, uh, th that's another issue, but I do believe that everyone that wishes to speak to this board on any item, at least as long as I'm chair, will be will be heard. And at that point, uh, um, if if we can do something about it, we typically will direct them towards uh, somebody within the county that can do it, the department head or whatever. And uh, in this case, uh, it sounds to me like uh, th these issues probably rely a little bit more on on our auditor's shoulders, uh, and and after I hear all things, I will probably say, Auditor Dicklich, you have heard these items, and uh, am I right there, <laughs> sir? And and, uh, and so, even though these are not something that the county board has control over, the absentee ballots, I believe that we have department heads that uh, elected a department head that uh, certainly is listening to these things as we speak. So, please, ma'am. Thank you, Commissioner Forsman, Chair Forsman, and, and commissioners. My name is Sharla Gardner, and um, I live at 1411 East 9th Street in Duluth, and I'm also a city councilor for the 3rd District. And uh, uh, President Foreman, Chair Forsman, is correct that we are here 
because the Minnesota Canvassing Board did unanimously recommend that counties open the so-called fifth pile absentee ballots, and we are here to request that Auditor Dicklich do that. As, a, as an elected official and um, as a city councilor, I'm, I always refer to that, that piece of um, the political spectrum as the front line of, of democracy. The city councilors and, and I think also county commissioners um, as well really do respond directly to the people. And as such, the democracy piece is extremely important to, I think, well, it's extremely important to our country, but I think it's also really important to make sure that every vote counts. Because that's what democracy is about. It isn't just about the voting. It's about who counts the votes and how they're counted. And this is not a partisan issue. I just think it's really important that St. Louis County after dealing with the recount as well as they have, as well as we have, because I live in this county too, um, proceeds to, to make sure that each and every vote count. This is something that um, we want to be able to talk to our children about. This is an election year that I think is unprecedented. There's this historical election year and people are going to be looking at this and they're going to be looking at St. Louis County. So I would urge you to please make sure that the absentee ballots are counted, they are legal ballots, and it's important that uh, that be brought forward. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Charlotte. Is there one, anyone else that wishes to speak to this, to speak to any item? I'm Marcus Lovejoy of Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm here as an absentee voter. I've lived in Duluth 30 years, but moved this year to another precinct within Duluth about a mile away and so had to go through quite a few hoops in order to vote. I had to change my license and register ahead of time to vote. So I did those things. I expected to be out of town so I went absentee. When I showed up at City Hall I was not a registered voter so again had to register that day also and voted in City Hall and I just want to know that my vote counted, that I went through all that trouble and deliberation and that my vote will be counted after I went through all of the hoops that I was supposed to. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Anyone else that wishes to speak? Anyone else that wishes to speak on an item that will not be on the agenda? With that, uh, we have the consent agenda. Oh, excuse me, uh, Commissioner Sweeney. Um, Commissioner Forsman, I just wanted to say thank you to you for allowing this group of people to speak. I, too, agree with exactly what you said. When people come to us, we have a responsibility to listen to what they have to say. And uh, so I thank you for allowing this group to speak to us. And I'll let you um, do what you have to do here at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Uh, Com Auditor Dicklich, uh, uh, since many of the items were ad addressed to you, and I see your hand was up there, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioners, um, you know, as county auditor, uh, I do have several different responsibilities. And um, I guess I'd just like to say that when, when I talk to people, ask, people ask me what my responsibilities are, I always tell them, start with the one that, and I tell them this, the one that I feel is the most important of all the responsibilities of my office is the one of election, administrating elections in St. Louis County. That, because it is, a fundamental grassroots element of our democracy. So I just want to assure everybody uh, here that if they've uh, misunderstood anything in the press or anything like that, that those ballots, any absentee ballots that were rejected in a, inappropriately will be counted. We are just going to do it. We're being very deliberate. We're going to make sure we follow the letter of the law. I've been in council with the uh, with uh, our county attorney continuously throughout this process, and I just want to assure people that every vote being counted is just as important to me as it is to any other person in our democracy. And they will be counted, but we're going to do this right. We're not going to. I don't want to have any grounds for uh, any court challenges, etc. And we're going to follow the letter of the law based on counsel of, of uh, our county attorney. You know, the way this process has gone, it's pretty much been 87 different county attorney opinions across the state. And it hasn't been an easy thing.
thing to follow when we've tried to pull this all together. We try to be very deliberative and weigh all aspects of this, but when it ultimately comes down to the bottom line is we're going to follow state statute to the letter. And right now there is, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, that the Supreme Court has, uh, is going to be hearing a petition by the Coleman campaign tomorrow at 1 o'clock. They've set aside, you know, there's no reason to move forward until they make their ruling, but we will be moving forward ultimately when we have the legal authority to do whatever the, either the court orders. Well, that's pretty much where we're going to be at right now. We want to see what the Supreme Court rules, and we'll be moving forward after that. But it, again, all, all appropriately cast ballots will be counted. I guarantee the citizens of this county that. Thank you, Auditor Dicklich, and uh, and uh, to having talked to uh, uh, to our to clerk of the board, uh, Paul, and uh, and yourself on this, I am confident that th that is going to be done, and I I think that this county will end up, as always, uh, probably the uh, a a model for the way things should be done. My personal belief, and I want to thank. Uh, thank Attorney Ford for her work in working on the legal aspect of this and keeping in contact with our, as as our elected uh, uh, attorney, working with our elected uh, auditor on it. And Attorney Ford, is there anything you wish to say on it? No, I agree with Auditor Dicklich that we have been in constant communication, not only between ourselves, but also with the County Attorneys Association, um, other county attorneys around the state, county auditors. Um, there is a Supreme Court order right now asking that no county count the uh, any open any ballot, and we are uh, at this point until they hear the case tomorrow and uh, issue an order. So it is our um, position right now to comply with that order from the Supreme Court asking us not to open any ballots at this time. Thank you, Attorney Ford. There, and and from the as chair of the board, I want to thank uh, the the. Uh, our auditor and the attorney's office, and all those in, in administration that have, and and our and uh, our clerk of the board for all of the work. That's this has been a very difficult time uh, for for these people, and I I know that Paul started off with a full head of hair before this election year. So, <laughs> so, so with that, uh, uh, any <laughs> any other uh, people that wish to speak to the board on an item not on the agenda. With that, I will turn to, to excuse me, Commissioner Crone. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just would like to ask the auditor how many votes are potentially at stake here. And then if you have any information on the Minnesota Canvassing Board uh, as far as a recommendation that they have. Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Crone, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh, and while I think that uh, nobody nobody can administer elections better than uh, our clerk of the board, Paul Tinula, and director of elections, he's he's got two hats he wears as well. Um, the number of ballots that we feel from our review that may have been rejected inappropriately is about 138. But that's based on our review. Someone else might look at those and come up with 140 or 200. I mean, you know, based on the statute, though, and the way we interpreted the review of those, it looks like there's about 138 of these rejected ballots that may have been rejected inappropriately. And that would be for the, you know, canvassing board to look at when that time comes that, that uh, the court orders it or whatever. Um, to your other question, um, really, all the all this, the canvassing board, they were very judicious in the way they worded their motion. They did not, uh, because the, I, I don't want to get into all the legal aspects of it, but they did say they recommended uh, that the county auditors or canvassing boards meet and go through these. But the, nowhere in there did they say open the ballots. They said they should review the, the piles, the, you know, there's, there's, you know, get this fifth pile of potentially um, uh, improperly rejected ballots. That's all that they're, the canvassing board asks for. They do not authorize, ask anybody to open any ballots. Thank you, Auditor Dicklich. I think the door might be locked there, and uh, people, 
people are trying to get into this open meeting here that <laughs> <laughs> with that. Um, uh, any other people I wish to speak to the board on an item that is not on the agenda? Um, to that, uh, we have the consent agenda in front of us. It has been moved. Is there support? Moved and supported. All, any questions? All in favor of said motion signify by the sign aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have uh, reports of boards and committees, Health and Human Services Committee, Commissioner O'Neill Chair, Chair uh, O'Neill. Thank you, Chair Forsman. Uh, we have before us a uh, request for a uh, application for a grant for the Minnesota Family Investment Program Racial Disparities Innovation Fund. And uh, I, I've already stated that I'm recusing myself from this. Uh, my understanding is the department did send a communication to all of us and met uh, with a couple commissioners to discuss this. I think questions have been answered. So I would ask someone to move it forward. It, it has been moved and supported. Uh, questions? Uh, Commissioner Nelson. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Forsman. Um, and uh, indeed, I, I did have a meeting with uh, Shelley Salko um, from the Health and Human Services Department uh, to discuss this grant and the and the particulars of uh, of the uh, granting process and what we as a county uh, the hoops that we needed to um, jump through to to even be eligible for this, and, and it has been explained to me.